As I'm recording this, we have embarked on what is hopefully a new age of space exploration. Just this morning, early, the Artemis 1 mission was launched and is on its way for a loop around the moon and back. Even though it's an unmanned mission, it is only the first launch in a series of missions that will take man back to the moon for the first time in over 50 years, and from there to Mars and perhaps even further. Coincidentally, today also marks the GA release of Spring Framework 6, a release that takes Spring into a new age of Java development, embracing current and upcoming innovations in the Java ecosystem. In this video, I wanted to show you how to use one of the new features of Spring 6, Problem Details. Spring 6's Problem Details is an implementation of RFC 7807 that simplifies how to respond with meaningful and accurate details in an API when things go wrong. So with no further delay, let's get started. Before I show you how to work with problem details in Spring 6, I thought I would show you this API I've created. It's a simple API that it lets me, um, in theory, I mean, we could build it out, but it only really does a couple of things right now, but it gives you information about different NFL teams, the National Football League and their stadiums. For example, I have a Teams controller that takes a that handles a get request for teams whatever the team name is stadium and what that's going to do is it's going to give back information about the stadium that that team plays in specifically uh, a, it's using a stadium repository which is just a reactive spring data crud repository uh, behind the scenes I have a Mongo database that's populated with different team information and different stadium information. The source of that I picked up from various places, but I got a Mongo database that tells me some information about the different teams and their stadiums. And specifically, a stadium has this information in it. It has a name, it has a capacity, the city and state where it's located, the type of surface or the turf that's on, on the stadium ground, a, whether the roof is open or retractable or a hybrid of that, what teams play there and it's possible that multiple teams play in a given stadium especially when you think of like for example Los Angeles uh, in New York in Los Angeles both the Rams and the Chargers both play in SoFi Stadium and then the year that the stadium opened now going back to our controller you can see here that if we ask for a stadium by its name the first thing it does is it goes to the repo and makes a call to find by team it ignores the case on that and if it finds the team, great. It, it returns the stadium information for that team. However, if the mono that is returned from find by team ignore case, if the mono that's returned is empty, then we're going to switch over to another mono that returns an error, specifically an unknown team exception. And we pass in the team name as a parameter to the constructor. That exception is pretty basic. It's a runtime exception that uh, takes the team name, uh, produces a message in the exception with the team such and such is unknown, and then sets the team name to a property that we can use later on. Now, I already have the API running. Let's kick the tires on a little bit and see what it looks like. All right, so I'm using HTTP IE. If you've never heard of it, HTTP IE is, it's kind of like a curl, but it's for humans. And it's a little bit easier to use. It assumes JSON. It assumes things like localhost. So I don't even have to specify a, a host name if it's localhost. And I can ask for things like team, and let's ask for the team's Broncos, and let's look for the Broncos Stadium. Let's see what that is. And sure enough, we have Empower Field at Mile High. It's in Denver, Colorado. It has Kentucky bluegrass on the ground. The only team that plays there is the Broncos, and it was opened in the year 2001. Oh, its capacity is 76,125. Great, let's try that with another team just for grins. So we'll back up here, and let's pick on how about the, uh, the Chargers? And you see here that the Chargers play at SoFi Stadium. The capacity is 70,000. It's in Inglewood, California. It has a Hellas uh, Matrix turf on its ground. And both the Chargers and the Rams play at SoFi. And it was open in the year 2020. Great! Now let's ask it about one more team. I'm going to ask it about the Yankees. Now, if you're familiar with the National Football League, you'll know that the Yankees is not an NFL team. Uh, it is, in fact, a Major League Baseball team. And my API only deals with NFL teams. So if I try to ask for the Yankees stadium, 
I'm going to get this really, really ugly response. And you can see, if you dig down in the details of it, once we get past this very ugly stack trace, you're going to see, in fact, that I got an internal server error, or HTTP 500. Um, it says the Team Yankees is unknown. That's accurate because, in fact, if you're looking down in the trace, it is an unknown team exception that was thrown. And um, this is nice, I, I guess, except it's not friendly. It's, it's nothing you want to give back to the client of this API. If the client of this API is, and it very likely is, a JavaScript a, a client or maybe a Go client or a uh, iOS client or what have you, um, any, any type of client of this is going to have little interest in what the stack trace, what the Java stack trace is. Even if it's a Java client, they're going to have you know little interest in this. There's not much they can do with this except maybe log it or, heaven forbid, display it on their UI. And um, so it's, this is really an ugly, ugly response. Furthermore, the 500 internal server error seems to be inaccurate to me. First off, 500 level errors, they're, they're server level errors. It means that something broke on the server. And that's not exactly accurate here. What really happened is the client asked for something that doesn't exist, asked for a resource that simply doesn't exist. And to me, that's a client error. Specifically, that should be a client 404 error. And so there's a lot of things wrong with this. Let's see if we can fix them with problem details. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to consider the fact that the team's um, controller throws or, or returns an error of an unknown team exception when this happens. So let's create, let's create a exception handler advice class. And in that class, we're going to annotate it as a REST controller advice. And what this does is it allows us to define behavior that applies to all the controllers in our API. In this case, we only have a couple of controllers, and there's only one that really matters in this case. But this will allow us to apply behavior to all the controllers in our, in, in our API. And what I want to do here is I want to have a method that returns something. For now, I'm just going to put object in there just as a placeholder, just so that nothing complains. And it's going to handle the unknown teams exception. Specifically, the way it's going to handle that is it's going to take the exception as a parameter and it's going to return something. I'll put null as a placeholder for now because there's one other thing I need to do before I finish, uh, finish filling out this method. I need to put an exception handler on this. And the exception handler wants, gets to define what types of exceptions it wants to handle. In this case, it's an unknown team exception. Helps if I could type. There we go. It's unknown team exception. Great. Now, how are we going to handle this? Now, prior to Spring Framework 6 and prior to RFC 7807, the way I would have solved this is probably by defining my own custom standard error class. I would have a class with a handful of properties that I want to communicate back to the client, and it would be of my design, of, of, you know, with my properties in it. And if I really wanted to really flesh it out, I might even have a very rich hierarchy of error classes that are based on this standard error, that, that are rooted at standard error. And this rich hierarchy would, would have different types of error messages depending on, or different types of error responses depending on what type of problem that was had. And it would expose different properties with more information pertaining to a specific property. And that's great, that, that would work. Except that now I have at least one and potentially many classes that I now need to maintain. The good news is with Spring Framework 6, and with RFC 7807, I don't need to do that. Instead, what I can do is return a problem detail object. Notice that problem detail comes from Spring Framework. It's problem detail. Great. And the way we create one of these is I'm going to say problem detail. We'll call it problem detail. That's a fine name. We'll say problem detail dot. And we have several different choices here of how we can create this. So there's some static creation methods. One is for a, a given status, given a HTTP status code object. One is uh, for the integer version of the status. And one is 
given the status detail status as well as some details that may describe additional information about what went wrong. That's the one I'm going to pick because I want to provide a little bit of extra information. Now the type of error code that I expect to have happen when an unknown team exception happens is a 404. So I'm going to say HTTP status dot not found. And then for my detail, let me chop this up on another line so it's a little bit easier to read. And for my detail, I'm going to pass in well, the, the message of the exception is a fine choice there. And then I'm going to take that problem detail and I'm going to return it. Now, you're probably thinking already that as you look at this code, oh my gosh, why aren't you just uh, returning uh, the problem detail directly? Why, why are you even creating a method variable for this? Why don't you inline that? And, and the answer to that is, that's fine. I could do that. Uh, however, I have a few other things I want to show you before this video concludes, and it kind of I, I'm going to kind of need a, a method variable, so I might as well just go ahead and do that now. All right. With that said, you can see that DevTools has already restarted my app, so let's give that another shot. First off, let's check to make sure that we can still get valid uh, stadiums for, for valid teams and that we haven't broke anything. So let's do that. That works. Now let's ask about that, that Yankees stadium again. And you'll notice that this time it gives us a nicer error. The, the body of the response has less information, but it's useful information. It doesn't have a Java stack trace that a client probably can't do much with. Instead, it has some detail, which is the message of the exception. It has the path, it has an HTTP status code of 404, means it's not found, and even the title says it's not found. Now the type, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what I wanna talk about in this video, but there's a, some additional information regarding the type of the, the problem that happens, and we could have uh, dealt with that, but we're gonna leave that alone for now, for this video. It's fine the way it is. Great. So up to this point, what we've done is we have created an exception handler, or a uh, exception handler advice more specifically that deals with team uh, a known team exception and it handles it by returning a RFC 7807 problem detail. Okay, let's say that we wanted to provide some additional information in the response. We didn't simply want to say the team Yankees is unknown. We wanted to provide some additional information that the client may be may find useful in handling this exception. Let's say, for example, that in addition to everything you see here in the problem details response, we also wanted to provide the team name. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing that. One is an obvious, pretty straightforward approach to this, is we could take, and instead of returning a problem detail here, we could take problem detail and use that as the, the base of a richer error hierarchy. And what we could do is create an uh, unknown team problem detail, perhaps, as a uh, that subclasses problem detail and with that it provides a team name. Well while we could do that and that would work fine it would require that we'd have one more class that we'd have to deal with and I prefer if we can avoid it to not have any additional classes. Instead if all you're doing in your your specialized problem details is adding a property or two it's much easier to do what I'm going to show you here and that is take the problem detail and say set property, give it a property name, in this case we'll call it team name, and give it some value. In this case, our exception has the team name on it, so we'll pass that along. So we just hit save. Um, it appears that I have an extra quote there. Let's fix that. Okay, we hit save. DevTools is going to, to restart to get all that in place. Give it a second, and we'll be able to try again. And now we have this exact same response we had before. The only real difference is we now have the team name as part of the body of the response. We still have all the other problem detail stuff, but we also have the team name as part of that. Okay, now let's say that we want to do something that is completely disallowed by the API. Let's say we wanted to create a brand new stadium. So we'll go to the stadiums endpoint, which by the way, on its own, returns a list of all the stadiums. But well, let's say we want to do a post request to that. And using HTTP IE, a post request is as simple as start passing in values that would be in the JSON as JSON properties in the request. So maybe the name of my stadium is my awesome stadium. And maybe the year it opened is 2022. 
and maybe there's additional properties. It really doesn't matter if I flesh this out or not because it's not going to work. And the reason it doesn't work is if you come up here and look at Stadium Controller, it's because Stadium Controller only handles Git requests. It only has a Git mapping for stadiums. It doesn't have any sort of post handling. Now we could maybe add a post mapping method in here if we wanted to and flesh it out with a delete and all that. But until we do that, it doesn't handle post requests and yet and we need to provide a meaningful, nice, concise and accurate message. Now if you dig around in this message we got back, once you get past this very ugly stack trace, you're going to see that in fact we got a 405, at least that much was accurate. The status code was correct. It says that post is not supported, but we still don't have the, the nice response that we got back when a team wasn't found. So let's do that. Now the reason this doesn't work is because this kind of problem where a post is not allowed, this is sort of in the framework itself. This is part of Spring MVC or Spring Web Flux itself. It's not part of our controllers. And our exception handler advice is really focused on dealing with exceptions from controllers. In this case, we only handle unknown team exception. We can handle other, we could have other exception handlers in here with other different types in there, but none of those exceptions are the kinds of exceptions that the framework itself may throw, such as when you try to post to something that you can't post to. So let's fix that. Now there's two ways of fixing that. One is we can come up to our application properties or application YAML if you so choose and set spring.webflux. If this was spring MVC, it would be spring.mvc, I believe. Problem details .enabled, and set that to true. And so we hit save and DevTools is going to restart this and we're going to give it a shot. And now we have a meaningful, accurate, and concise response, very much like what we got when the team wasn't found. We get a similar response, an RFC 7807 problem details response for when the method isn't allowed. In this case, it's telling us that only the get method is allowed for stadiums, and it's a 405 and method not allowed. Great, that's one way of doing it. There is another way. We can get rid of this, make that go away, and instead come over to our exception handler advice and we can have it extend uh, response entity exception handler. This essentially does the same thing and as you'll see once it uh, once DevTools has had a chance to restart it still works even though we're not setting that problem details enabled to true it still works it still gives us the same um, problem details response for when we try to do any sort of uh, operation that's not allowed on the API. And the really big difference between these two, it's you know six of one, half dozen of the other. It's up to you to decide which is best. If you already have an exception handler advice already and you're doing something like we're doing here with unknown team exception, then there's no reason not to just go throw in there extends response entity exception handler. However, there's no point in creating a, a, a controller advice for no reason if you already don't have one. So it's maybe in that case, it's simpler to go add the um, problem details enabled property to the application properties or application YAML. Also, by putting it in application properties and application YAML, you have the opportunity, if you, if you so choose, to either turn it on or off as a consequence of a profile being active. So let's recap. What we've done here is we've created an API. The API, when it doesn't work, produces some very ugly exceptions. But what we've done is we've applied Spring Framework 6's support for RFC 7807 to return problem details responses instead. The problem details responses are much more concise, much more accurate, and they're just friendlier and use, more useful to the client that, that's consuming them. Moreover, when we work with exceptions that come out of the controllers, we, we do this using a controller advice that has an exception handler that returns a problem detail object. We can extend the problem detail object either by extending that class or more simply, if all we're doing is adding a property or two, calling the set property function or the set property method on the problem details to set whatever properties we want. When we're dealing with exceptions that come out of the framework itself, then we have two choices as well. We can either set a property that enables problem details, or we can simply have our, our controller advice 
extend response entity exception handler. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I certainly hope you learned something from it. Just like the Artemis launches promised to take us into a new era of space exploration, I, I expect that Spring Framework 6 is going to take Java developers into a new era of development, and it's an exciting time to be a Java developer and a Spring developer. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Tell others about it. Tell your colleagues about it. Follow me on Twitter. I tweet about all sorts of stuff there, and I'm also available on Mastodon now. So check out my Mastodon account. Follow me there as well. And check out my books. The book on the left is Spring in Action, the sixth edition. It covers up to Spring Framework 5, because unfortunately, Spring Framework 6 just came out today, and the book hasn't had an opportunity to catch up with that yet. But Spring Framework 5, a lot of great material in there, a lot of great stuff you can do with the Spring Framework, and if you're not familiar with Spring already, this is a great introduction to that topic. Also, check out the book on the right. It's a book on developing talking applications for Amazon Alexa. I'm very excited about the opportunities afforded by voice application development, and that book will help you get you started developing voice applications for Alexa. Well, until next time, thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next video.